Hi everyone, welcome to episode 10 of our Pong tutorial in Unreal Engine 5. Hopefully the series has been pretty good for everyone. They're starting to take a grasp of the real beginner points that you need to learn in Unreal Engine. And we'll move on from here and try and do the more complicated things. So where we left off last time is we've got a menu which start game, goes to the game and carries on. It also makes some changes to the statistics. But the problem we have at the moment is every time you close and reload the game, those statistics reset to zero. So we will be changing those and we'll add another statistic to go for unfinished games, for those that we don't complete or the game crashes or we just quit halfway through. Uh, and obviously exit game, just exit game. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add an option. So with a bar, just to show that we can change how many uh, points it takes to win a game. And then after that, we uh, pretty much have a game complete and we can play to our heart's content. So the first thing we need to do is go into our game instance and we're gonna do a saving and loading. So under your Pong GI, opening that up and you'll see here we've got the statistics struct which has got everything in, um, but we need to save and we need to load. So we're gonna add a custom event, call this one save game. And you can take what we learn here and put it on a button if you want to do a save button, but we're going to do everything from uh, from when we load the game to begin with. So save game, we're going to check does save game exist. And we're, going, we're not going to have multiple slots, so we're just going to call this Pong save game. And user index we can leave as blank or leave as zero. And we're going to run the branch by holding B and left clicking out onto there. If it does exist, then we're going to load the game from the same slot. So make sure you have exactly the same text, no spaces, no nothing. And we're going to promote that to the variable, which will be the save game object. No, we're not. Ignore that. We're going to do something more onto this in a minute. And if it doesn't exist, we want to create save game object. And this is what we're gonna change now. So you go to your content drawer, right click, and go to blueprint class. And in the classes search bar at the bottom, you wanna type in save game, or just save and open it up. And we'll call this pong underscore save game. If I can type and open it up. This object will have every single variable that you want to save. So there is no quick way of doing this as well. So you're gonna to have to manually do every single one. Uh, luckily for us, we've got it all in a struct. So we're gonna just call it statistics. And we're going to call it a stru statistics struct. There it is. And goodbye then save, and that's all we need from there. So we need to create the save game object, object, provide a variable. We can call this pong underscore save game object. We can remove that variable we had created before. And I have forgotten to change that. So pong save game, which means the blue one, if I hover over it, says pong save game, as opposed to generic save game. So let's try it again. Remove that. Now we can right click and promote. And we can call this Pong Save Game. You can see that the variable type is now Pong Save Game rather than just normal Save Game. Up the top here, we can do the same thing. But in order to get it to be this, we need to cast off because we need to get this load game. And we need to make sure it is of the Save Game type to pong save game and then we can alt and drag and get our pong save game together now what we need to do is we need to take that save game and we need to fill in all the information from our game instance so we need to get our pong save game or you can drag off these branches here and we need to set statistics and we're going to grab the statistics from the game instance and then connect everything up. 
And after that's done, we can go save game, do slot, take the pong save game, drop it into there, make sure the slot is exactly the same, copy and paste, and compile and save. So that is effectively how you save a game. What we can do is if you have multiple variables, you can turn this into a macro or a collapsed node and then have them all done in one section. But you do have to do each of the game save variables all in one go. So it's all well and good that we save the, uh, save the game. We need to load it up though. So we need to do custom event, load game. And it's going to be very similar to this. So does save game exist? And the check. If it does, we want to load the game and cast as we do here. If it doesn't, then we can't save. So we can just ignore the false on this section. If it does, then wonderful. Uh, and then we want to grab the save game and we want to get statistics and we want to set the statistics of our game instance and that is effectively how to load File and save. And the only thing we need to do now is we need to actually call these events. So we need to use a begin play for the game instance situation, uh, the game instance item, which in this case is event init or event on initiation. And we want to load game. So if it doesn't exist, it's not going to do anything. But if it does exist, it's going to work. Well, and save. And we want it to save every time it's going to make a change to the statistics. So, for example, when it goes to start the game. So up here, start game. Where it adds to the statistics. Before it opens the level, we can get our game instance. We can save game. Well, and save. So now if we push play, statistic 000, zero, zero and we start the game. And we wait for three points, I believe. And go to statistics, it says game played one and one one. If I exit the game and I reopen the game again, it should stay with the played, but the one hasn't saved. So let's double check why that is. That is because uh, we've only saved on the start game, so we need to go back to our ball collision. And we need to check for game over in the game mode. And it's going to save the game. Right before changing map. 
Okay, and that is loading and saving the statistics. So we're just going to make one more final change to the game. And if we go to our menu, I'm going to add a new button. So we right click and duplicate onto the statistics and we'll call it options. What we're going to have is we're going to have this box here show our options as well. So just make a change there and then we're going to grab this vertical box. We're going to duplicate. I'm going to call this and we're going to call this options box window. And click options. So this is going to be option. Drag that down. So zero, one, and two. So if we click on options button, click on on click down the bottom. And we're going to set options box. Active widget to two. back to the designer options box and we're going to use a horizontal box and we're going to call it uh, call that nothing but we're going to add a slider to it and we're going to add a text box and make everything fill and we can edit the font. Now if you click on the slider, I'm just going to rename it. And scroll down to the bottom, you see on mouse capture end or on mouse capture begin. So I'm going to change it to on value changed. Now it's going to grab the value. So what we want is we want this value to be rounded. And we want to change get the game instance. We want winning score. We want to set the winning score to that. Well, and save. And if we go back to the slider on the options, we've got a minimum and a maximum value. So we would say minimum of 1, maximum of 10. And on the text box, we can actually bind that to the winning score on the game instance. Well, and save. So now, if we push play, under the options menu, it's set to three by default. And then as we change the option, we can see that it goes from one to 10. And if we just set it to one and start the game, as soon as one point goes, you should see That's the end of the game. Statistics. We can see this played as one is lost. And what we'll do is just add another another one in here. Games unfinished. text box here we're going to create a binding grab the game instance get the statistics and break it open we want the total games played minus the one and the subtract well save control shifted s to save everything and we can play. So we can set it to default to five. And we can start playing. And that is our full game of Pong. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the series. We are gonna do a uh, short 
a video after this one just to go over a couple of the bugs especially with the collisions from the ball and the paddle uh, i might change how we do the direction changing as well uh, but in the meantime thank you all for watching if you like the video like the video uh, if you didn't then obviously hit the dislike uh, subscribe and share and uh, join my discord all the links are in the description below hope you guys enjoyed it thank you very much